The weekend was intended to be a romantic getaway to celebrate their anniversary. But very quickly, those plans would derail, and the consequences to the weekend's twist in disturbing events would be cataclysmic. My name is Adrian, and welcome back to another video by Coffeehouse Crime. Gabby's disappearance was a tragic story that gripped the headlines of most of the Western world. And while the case dominated the media, there were several other disappearances happening at that very same time that totally slipped under the radar, and I'm here today to share one of them with you. By the way, I post solved, unsolved, and strange cases here on a weekly basis, so if that sounds like your kind of thing, please consider subscribing to Coffeehouse Crime. But for now, pull up a seat, grab a coffee, and sit back. This is the case of Emily Falazzo. Today's video begins in the state of New Hampshire. With a little over 1.3 million residents calling this place home, New Hampshire is one of the least populous states in America. And by size, it's one of the smallest too. Defined by its quaint towns, colourful trees, and large expanses of wilderness, you will find plenty of natural beauty here. And its persistence in red brick architecture brings a warm setting to its urban areas. Nestled deep in the middle of New Hampshire lies a small town called Plymouth, a town which, in 1999, became the birthplace to Emily Schwartz. Emily was born on the 25th of July 1999 to her father Randy and mother Adrian, and she was described to be bright and sparkly. Growing through her younger years, Emily attended Concord High School in New Hampshire, and participated in cross country, a hobby that she was very passionate about. Unfortunately, Emily's parents would eventually split up, and although they did, Emily kept in regular contact with them both. She carried on living with her mother Adrienne and her stepfather David, and moving into adulthood, Emily would eventually earn her accreditation as a licensed nursing assistant, formally completing the program in 2019. Emily was a very conscientious young woman. She found joy in caring for other people, and this was precisely why she embarked on her journey to become an LNA. An interim achievement before she planned to embark on her lifelong ambition to become a cosmetologist. Self-confidence is a very fragile thing, and wanting to work in cosmetology, Emily knew this. She wanted to make others feel good about themselves, something even she herself struggled with every now and then. It was in the early months of 2020 that Emily would meet an older man named Joseph Falazzo. And at the age of 40, he was twice her age. But that didn't necessarily matter to her. Emily would eventually fall in love with Joseph, and to her, he was the love of her life. He was a licensed tattoo artist in a nearby parlour, working in New Hampshire and the neighbouring state of Vermont. One thing led to another between the two, and by the 12th of October that very same year, Emily Schwartz had officially become Emily Falazzo marrying Joseph and becoming a pack of three along with their dog Remington, affectionately nicknamed Remy. With a license in nursing in the bag, and a boyfriend who is now a husband, life for Emily Flazo was pretty good, and for the first several months of their marriage, things appeared to be going moderately well too. I mean granted, Emily's father's side of the family did not get much of an opportunity to meet Joseph, plans either seemed to stall or be cancelled. Nevertheless, they only met Joseph once in their first year, and their encounter seemed to be a little strange. The family claimed that something didn't quite click with him in the first instance that they met, and while the Schwartz family may have been hands-off, it seemed that perhaps Joseph was hands-on. Both scratches and bruises were noticed on Emily by her mother and her friends, but she would always shrug those comments to the side. By autumn of the next year, in October 2021, the couple were fast approaching their one-year anniversary. They had also converted a Chevrolet Express bus into a fully mobile camper van, and with their very own home now on wheels, and a special anniversary coming up, they decided to celebrate by taking to the hills of Vermont for some peace and tranquility. The pair left New Hampshire on the 15th of October 2021 heading west into Vermont until they eventually found themselves at an Airbnb in Bolton, 
a small town in the western foothills of the Green Mountains, the Airbnb just a stone's throw away from Bolton Valley Resort. But just the very next morning, their plans would take a turn for the worse. In what would be Joseph's own words, the two fell into an argument. An argument that became so heated that Emily demanded Joseph to stop the campervan. And after doing so, she embarked out of the vehicle before walking alone down Route 2. Allegedly, Joseph then headed over to a nearby convenience store in Bolton for snacks, but by the time he returned to the site where he let Emily go, she was nowhere to be found. Her social media remained silent and inactive too. Despite family and friends messaging her back at home, she never responded to any of them. Joseph scanned the immediate area, but nothing was found. And Emily never responded to any of her messages either. It seemed that Emily had well and truly vanished. A couple more days would pass, and on Monday the 18th of October, Joseph would return home to New Hampshire. He would, however, come back alone. And it didn't take long for Emily's parents, who were already worried, to notice that she was mysteriously absent. It was in this moment that Joseph informed her mother and stepfather of the argument that the two had. A story that both parents didn't buy. Emily's disappearance was a complete shock to her family, and although they'd noticed slight changes to her personality in the last year or so, this was totally out of character for her to just get up and head out into the wilderness all alone. And Joseph seemed to be pretty uneasy too. Even stranger, but Joseph had returned home with an entirely different vehicle. Their beloved camper van that they'd spent many months on converting and working on together was now replaced with a Jeep Wrangler and no one could understand why. As Monday's daylight faded, both anxiety and concerns over Emily's whereabouts heightened. The possibilities of her simply getting lost or having no phone signal on her were quickly fading away by the second. All in the meanwhile, the more extreme possibilities that no one wanted to address were silently manifesting in the background. Unsure of what to do, Emily's family filed a missing persons report to the police that very same evening a report that would shift police investigations very quickly into gear. Searches around the surrounding area in which she disappeared began to take place, but due to the lack of media coverage, search parties were small. Breaking news this morning, police are trying to track down a missing New Hampshire woman who was last seen in Bolton. Troopers say 22-year-old Emily Ferlazzo had been staying at an Airbnb with her husband. They say on Saturday she got out of a car she was riding in and started walking along Route 2. Investigators say she was last seen after an argument with her husband. Troopers say when her husband went to a store close by to pick her up, she was nowhere to be found. Worries over her safety continued to grow through the night. And by midday of Tuesday, Police announced that they were now looking for Joseph Falazzo, as they had been unable to locate or communicate with him in the most recent 24 hours. And the reasoning for why they wanted to speak to him was very disturbing. It was just that night before that police received a phone call from another man who claimed to be Joseph's friend. And in the middle of the night, he had called 911 straight after kicking Joseph out of his car. Allegedly, Joseph had confessed to killing his own wife and he had also told him the location of the camper van and where they could find Emily. Soon after that, police would find the van on a property on Meadowbrook Lane, located in St Albans town. And a police officer, who had heard of the reports and kept a keen remembrance on Joseph's face, found him at a nearby convenience store later that afternoon. Technically, police could not search the van as they had no legal search warrant. And as for Joseph, they had no evidence to arrest him either. But after being voluntarily requested by police to head on down to the local barracks, Joseph fortunately agreed. And that is where he came clean with the whole story. While under interrogation, Joseph finally gave up his most prominent secret. His wife wasn't missing, and Spencer wasn't lying. Joseph had killed Emily in the early hours of Saturday the 16th of October. Following this information, police would finally obtain a search warrant for the Chevrolet Express van, and, once inside, they would uncover a very sombre and disturbing scene. 
Located in the bathroom, they would find eight garbage bags, one of which was opened to reveal a severed human leg with a missing foot. The other seven bags remained unopened, but further searches later would reveal the rest of a human body. Joseph would also reveal to police what specifically happened to him and his wife. They had argued early in the Saturday morning, and after Emily laid down on the bed to cool off, Joseph grabbed his Glock handgun from inside the vehicle, proceeded to jump on top of her, and shot her twice in the head, at point-blank range. Shortly after, he experienced a panic attack, before placing a bag over her head and placing her body in the bathroom. Joseph then travelled eight miles to Waterbury, where he then had breakfast with his sister and her boyfriend, before driving the van and Emily's body to the plot of land where she was found. And approximately 15 hours later, he dismembered his wife's body with the use of a handsaw, cutting her feet, legs, arms and head from her body. He then placed her remains inside garbage bags in the van's bathroom. And after completing these incomprehensible actions, Joseph then decided to return home to New Hampshire alone, back to Emily's family, leaving her body to slowly decay for several days. The handsaw and handgun were both found in the van by police. We start with breaking news tonight. A woman reported missing has been found dead and her husband tells state police that he did it. Well, Brian Alice Joseph Ferlazzo was recognized at a Maplefields convenience store earlier today by a state police detective and that detective bringing him here to the St. Albans barracks just minutes away from that store where he eventually confessed to killing his 22 year old wife, Emily. Now, state police say that once they brought Joseph in for questioning, he admitted to killing Emily inside the camper early Saturday morning, which state police searched here tonight at the barracks. The information he provided um, was that he had killed his wife, Emily. Uh, he said that he had done so in the town of Bolton in the early Saturday morning hours. Well, her body will be brought to the chief medical examiner's office in Burlington for an autopsy tomorrow to determine the cause and manner of death and to confirm her identity. And Joseph Ferlazzo is still here in St. Albans and police say that he is expected to be charged with first degree murder by the end of the night and his arraignment will be tomorrow in Burlington. Joseph, who, after revealing these harrowing details, was then jailed at the Northwest State Correctional Facility in St. Alban Town. He was virtually arraigned and charged the very next day after his confession, where he was acquitted of first degree murder. And, big surprise, he pleaded not guilty. Joseph is now being held without bail at the Northwest State Correctional Facility in St Albans, until an evidentiary hearing takes place in the coming weeks or months. And with his confession, it's highly unlikely that he will ever set foot outside as a free man again. The judge commenting that the state police affidavit provides a great weight of evidence. He is due back in court on November the 8th. It actually seems that this may just be the start of a very long legal process for Joseph, as investigators in Pennsylvania are now looking for a possible connection to the 2009 murder of his very own stepmother. Young Helim Falazo was stabbed to death at a home in Upper Gavend Township in October of 2009. And although her husband, Joseph Falazo Sr., was questioned by police, he was cleared of being a suspect very early on, and the case remains open and unsolved to this date. It's also kind of strange to learn that Joseph had multiple Facebook profiles, one of them including a profile picture with his arm around another woman not even 11 months prior to his marriage. And on the note of Facebook profiles, one upsetting note to this case is the final public post made by Emily before her death. Although it's a post that was made several months before her death, Emily shared her love to her husband, Joseph. And coincidentally, the one comment left on this picture is made by the man who would rightfully turn this monster into police. I can imagine that, from one killer to another, Joseph was kind of hoping that Brian Laundrie would take all of the spotlight this autumn. Sorry, Joe. In her obituary, Emily's family spoke with their hearts and their humour, as they described her as one to bring great joy to her family. She was a beautiful, aspiring singer, and American Idol does not know what they missed. 
Her infectious personality was uncontainable. It's clear to see that Emily was someone who had a lot of love and nurture in her nature. She was a nurse and wanted to become a cosmetologist to help people with their confidence. She placed her trust in those that she loved, and with great sadness, the one that she placed it in most would abuse it and abuse her. Emily's death is tragically just one of many homicides through domestic violence, and in the United States alone, domestic violence has risen by 8.1% in the last year, which is a very concerning figure. If you find yourself becoming a victim to domestic violence, please take your safety seriously, and seek help sooner rather than later. Thank you so much for watching another video today by Coffeehouse Crime, and for joining me in another case of true crime. Initially, this case was intended to only be one part of a longer video addressing multiple cases which slipped under the radar during the time of Gabby's disappearance. However, this one was too detailed and shocking to condense down into five minutes. What do you think about the case of Emily Falazzo? And what do you think about Joseph? All I can say is that he was a real piece of work. And also, please share your thoughts if you'd like to hear more underreported cases too. Tragically, they are in abundance. That's all I have for today, folks, but with this video being shorter than usual, my next one will be out on Monday. Have a great weekend, and once it's over, I'll be right here, behind this camera, waiting for you in the next one. Until that moment arrives, though, look after each other. Goodbye.